I'm Giulia Giupponi of the Department of Social and Political Sciences here at Bocconi University. Can I ask you to tell us what is your current research interest? So my research interests, broadly speaking, are in the areas of labor and public economics, with a focus in particular on social insurance and labor market policies. In recent work, I studied how job retention schemes can help alleviate the negative impact of recessions on workers and firms and can potentially ease the recovery. Uh, job retention schemes are government programs that allow firms that experience some temporary shock to reduce the number of hours worked by their employees. The employees then receive a subsidy from the government to compensate them for uh, the income loss due to hours not worked. These type of schemes have been uh, extensively used during both the Great Recession and even more during the COVID crisis. Just to give you a sense of scale, uh, uh, in April 2020, so at the very beginning of the COVID crisis, in countries like Italy or France, up to a third of employees were involved in these programs. Um, in work that I've done with Camille Landé at the London School of Economics, we show that these programs are especially effective at shielding workers from the cost of job loss, and they can help kind of smooth their uh, uh, recoveries. That's very interesting. But when you were a child, what did you dream to become? Not, probably not a social scientist? So, um, to be honest, when I was a child, I don't think I had like a specific professional path that I envisaged for myself. I have to say that I don't think that this implied a lack of aspiration. Um, it really sort of set me kind of open to investigate different domains. And I think kind of that cumulatively gave me a sense of what could interest me in the long run. But then when um, you were growing up, did you experience any specific gender-related gender stereotype that might make life diff more difficult for you? So when I was a child and during adolescence, I think I was very lucky actually of growing up in an environment, especially within my family, in which roles weren't especially um, kind of stereotypically gendered. And so I think this freed me from the misconception that men and women kind of are set for different trajectories in life. But I'm very well aware that this was a great uh, fortune I had and that there was a large share of girls, but also boys that grow up kind of with kind of implicit constraints on their aspirations. Um, the moment in which I probably perceived more gender stereotypes was maybe a little bit later in life when I entered the labor market. Oh. But then, at that time, you had already decided that you would become a scientist. I did. Um, the decision to embrace academic research came towards, I would say, the end of my uh, university studies. That was a time in which I understood that uh, um, economics uh, and a PhD in economics could actually give me a set of rigorous tools to understand um, some aspects, at least, of individual behavior and of the world we live in. And while your career blossomed, did you find many people who, who were an inspiration, a sort of inspiration for you? Certainly. I think even before uh, starting my PhD, during my uh, university studies, seeing both junior and senior female researchers uh, succeed in the academic environment gave me some sort of confidence that I could possibly belong to this, um, to this, to this world, to the profession in the longer run. But even nowadays, I've got kind of many uh, colleagues that I really look up to, uh, that I admire for their work, their work ethic. Um, some of them I admire for the way they approach say, research questions and research more generally, others for their ability to mentor young uh, scholars, others for the way they can engage with the public discourse, with the public debate. So there's kind of many different, if you want, aspects that, uh, that, I, uh, that I admire, uh, that I find inspiring, and I try to uh, emulate, if you want, for as much as I can. What a nice portrait you've um, uh, outlined of a good person as well as a good researcher. Uh, so I, I suppose this 
is what a good researcher might look like. I think so. I think there's many aspects of our uh, of our work that make us kind of good citizens, if you want, within the profession. Um, individually, I think research is uh, as much about success as it is about failure. And so probably uh, the ability to learn from failure and cherish success is also part, I think, of being a successful uh, researcher. There is a quote that I just recently came across from the very inspiring uh, Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine, uh, Professor Catalin uh, Carico, who said that uh, to strive in this profession, you need to focus on the things that you can change. I think this is a rather simple, but also difficult mantra, uh, but at the same time is something that probably uh, is, that I believe is really important, both in our profession and possibly in life more generally. Thank you, Julia. It's been a very inspiring talk. Thank you.